Welcome to Song is Born, where we turn conversations into songs. Our passion for creation is thrown against a blank canvas to bring our guests' inspirations to life. All right, well, uh, welcome back to episode two of Song is Born. Um, we've got Caleb Sullivan here as our guest for this episode. What's um, up, Caleb? Hey, guys, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we appreciate episode, it. Episode one was awesome. Um, <laughs> oh, it you. was, I loved like how something so simple became something so awesome. Like when you guys talked to, uh, on that first day, it was just like just a casual conversation amongst bros. And then all of a sudden the next day, Carrie's like in his car and he's like tapping on the beat and he's like got all these awesome lyrics. And you're like, oh my gosh. And then you guys come together and then a song is born. Yeah. And hopefully we could do it again. <laughs> it's, like, it's like we did that first episode, and then we're all like, um, okay, so where do we, what do we do next? <laughs> How do we follow that up? Uh, I'm, I'm excited to have Caleb as our first official guest. Uh, we've hung out a couple times. You know, we met through Bo. But uh, I don't think I've ever quite seen you at your full music potential. True. So That's I'm true. very excited for that. Yeah, so, so I mean, a basic introduction for for Caleb. I mean, I met him years ago when I first moved down to Florida. He he works with me at the hotel, and uh, you know, we I I had heard that he had played music, and you know, I knew no one down here at the time to even remotely think about playing music with anyone. So eventually, we came, uh, you know, got into a discussion about it. And I think I think you had talked about some of the music you liked or were listening to at the time. And I believe Mumford and Sons was one that came up um, that you yeah. were, you were like into at the time. And I was like, Oh, that's really cool. I, you know, I'd love to to have you over. And I, I had a, a crammed electronic drum set s- stuffed in one of my, you know, uh, basically a storage room at the time. Um, yeah. So we kind of just crammed ourselves in there and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, Caleb, you know, just sit over there somewhere where there's space and I'm behind my drum set and like, there's no room to do anything. And, uh, you know, we just started, started jamming, you know, to nothing in particular, but it was just really cool to get together and, and play music and just kind of improvise a little bit. And, you know, honestly, that's mostly what we've, we've ever done is improvise whenever we get together and just play, because, you know, that's kind of your life, right? Like you're, you, you have fleeting moments in between yeah. you're such a busy person that it's very difficult to plan and um you know kind of get together in any regard and then when you have the opportunity you make the best of that moment that's that's one thing that i've i've come to learn from you is is that mm-hmm. no matter what this is funny i was talking to someone and i, I was i was like what, what, you know anything in particular i should ask caleb because he, he 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 knows you vaguely and uh he's like one thing that comes to mind for for a theme song for you guys for for caleb is everything is awesome from the lego movie (laughs) because no matter no matter what you make the best out of that moment and just lift everyone's spirits like it can be an entire bar that's pretty much packed and then caleb comes in and just makes makes the day makes everyone's day just by walking into that bar and just just the smile he has on the spirit that he just lifts everyone up in that moment so you know that's that's thank you that's kind of the the introduction for for caleb in a nutshell but you know I, i'm definitely looking forward to diving into you know what's going on lately and and how those interactions early interactions with you and our music kind of transpired to where you're at now so i mean it's well chris pratt is you know one of my spirit animals so <laughs> you guys actually kind of look a little similar i gotta say I know the fact that he went like from chubby to super sexy, it gives me hope, you know, like one day, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. All right. So you definitely struck me as a family man. How many kids do you have now? Is it four? Three. Three. Okay. Yeah. How, how's everything going? Uh, I know you guys just had a newborn like during the whole COVID thing. How's that been? Yeah. Um, Isley is our most recent addition to the family. Uh, she's a little over a year now. Um, yeah. It was kind of, like Shelby, <clears throat> my wife Shelby had COVID while she was pregnant. So that was like another thing to just kind of be like, you know, into the unknown and everything was fine and it all so worked out. So she's a product of lockdown. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. She's <laughs> technically, I think conception was before 
lockdown. But so she's not like the technical <laughs> COVID baby. But yeah, she was <laughs> born enough. in the COVID era. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what? One of the things that you know, I, I again, uh, this is over the years of knowing Caleb, and and you know, every 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 year it seems like there was something more. Uh, deeply revealed about his musical background and and so on, and even though this 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 show isn't just about interviewing people with with musical backgrounds, it, it would it would be amiss to not delve into you know your family and where you know where you got inspiration initially, because what every single one of your siblings plays music, your pa- both of your uh, I think your mom plays music. I'm not sure if your dad does. Um, no. But so that that's like the only one in your family. And then, you know, even on your wife's side, there's there's a whole background of, of musical uh, capabilities there. And, you yeah. you know, with your, with your church, you're doing a lot of music uh, with your church every week. And, and whether it's drums or guitar or, or so on, um, even involved right. in plays. I mean, you know, you're, you're just every every step of the way you're you're involved in this um, creative process as well. So I would be interested to know, you know, where, where that got started with you, what was your earliest inspiration and what kind of drove you to do and be where you are today? Um, one of my earliest music memories was back when I was, I don't know, maybe five or six and my mom's guitar was laying on her bed and I just kind of like got up there and just tried playing and then she came in and started playing something and I don't even remember what it was, but I just remember that, like that moment, just having an interest in guitar or having that interest in guitar. And then, um, growing up the church that I went to growing up, it was like through the elementary kind of school years, the band was awesome. And the music was like, really, uh, they would call it contemporary Christian music or whatever. But, uh, the drummer was so tight, just like, I, I loved watching the drums. Like that was my, like, you know, 20 minutes every Sunday and every Wednesday, I would just be like watching the drummer play drums and seeing the different styles of music. And I don't know, it was just so captivating. And then one day my brother um, actually bought a drum set, my older brother, Andrew, um, cause he had a job and everything. So he saved up his money. He bought like this, one of those beginner Tama kits and he had it set up in his bedroom <clears throat> and he let me play every once in a while but um we weren't like cool yet we were still like kind of annoying little brother stage so when he went off to college he left his drum set set up in his room and probably like three times a week for like a few months i would just go in there with like my dad's ipod ipod classic and like plug in <laughs> some crappy headphones and just like beat the heck out of those drums, play along to everything from like the Beach Boys to like the Jonas Brothers mm-hmm. to Switchfoot. Was, um, that a, was that your iPod or like one of your parents? That was one of my parents. I didn't even have an iPod at the time. I was just yeah. like, I like how you playing, go, you go, playlist. Yeah. I like how you use your hand like iPod when really it was more like iPod. Oh yeah. Like it, that like, <laughs> it, it could kill a person. Yeah. <laughs> you drop that off a building. Someone's going to in, be injured for sure. Uh, I, and, and, you know, just a similar path to you. Like I, I, I had my boom box set up with, it was a three CD boom box that I, I used and brought it with me whenever I was playing drums and just plug in some headphones. And a lot of the times I would just play the radio, you know, and just put it on, whatever came on, you just play along to it. And, and that, that's where, I mean, I didn't have anyone to play with at the time. So that was my only outlet to kind of, you know, learn the music and, and really delve into that. So that's, that's really great that, you know, you kind of had a similar experience in that regard. Okay. Let's yeah. uh, what did you, what did you ever like watch instructional videos or did you like have anyone you were inspired by on the drums at all? Not in the early years, to be honest, it was just the couple of drummers that I would see, at church and then um eventually there was a band uh out of kansas city this guy named Corey asbury he had this drummer who i wouldn't find out his name until i I wouldn't even realize that he was my favorite drummer until like um probably four or five years later and he had moved over to california and joined this band called bethel music which is based out of this church over in california yeah Yeah, so great (laughs) their main drummer those guys the other day well, their main drummer, his name is David Whitworth, okay. and there's just something about 
his style, his personality. I've got to meet him probably like six times now. Oh, um, wow. And the first solid, time, man. yeah, he's just so good. And, so and good. the first time I ever met him, it was like, I think I was in Tampa at one of their like tour nights. And it was at this big church in Tampa. And afterwards, they're just kind of like breaking down the stage. That's like one of those things about like, like Christian bands is like, they're usually their own teardown team. <laughs> so like, they don't just like head off to the bus and like everyone, like they're out there like putting their equipment away and stuff. I know that's a lot of bands, not just Christian bands. Um, where am I going with this? So anyway, he's tearing down and I just kind of ran up and I was like, hey, David, you've been my favorite drummer since like 2009. And I was just kind of like going to say that and walk away. And he's like, wait, wait, come here. And he like called me over and we hung out and talked for like 15, 20 minutes. So probably that's, he's one of my more like inspired by drummers, especially because influential, yeah. pretty much all, most of all of what I play when I am playing in a live setting is I'm playing at church and I'm playing like what I would call it worship drums. So yep. there's a lot of spontaneity. We don't play with a click or anything. Um, I actually hope to one day get us on a click and like be able to have like loops and stuff. Right. Um, but it's essentially, that's been my kind of my main thing. And actually that's how I grew as a drummer is uh, one day the church, the, the guy was playing drums. It was actually this, this older guy and he like, they retired or something and moved away and there was just a need and I kind of just filled a need. And then somebody else who used to play drums for the church had like come back. And so then we'd kind of like share um, the schedule a little bit. And for the past couple of years, I've been like the only drummer at the church. So now it's either we have a full band and I'm playing drums or we do like an acoustic <sighs> set and I'm playing guitar. Shelby's playing piano, her sister's things. So that's, that's kind of like how I was thrown into it. So when I met Bo, it was the first time that I ever got into this setting of like uh, jamming, you know, like even though me and my brothers all play music, we, had never just gotten together and just jammed for no reason. Every time it was always a practice before church or a practice yeah. Yeah, rehearsal for church. So it kind of opened up a door as almost like when you're, when you're writing a song and then you pick up a new instrument to write on. Like the first time I ever wrote something from the piano, it just felt so much different than what I had ever written on the guitar. Not necessarily better, just different. And it, it was like that. It was, we're up in that room, that tiny little room. <clears throat> it's, you got his electric kit shoved in the corner and then like the computer that we're recording on and i'm like on a stool and we're just kind of like shoved in there but we were we have our headphones on we're just going for it and like there was one one time i forget what what it was called but it was like a western we called it the western the western Western? yeah i have that recorded too (laughs) (laughs) and it's like who even knows what we were playing but like i started kind of like going up on some scales and that's another thing is as long as i've been playing i don't know a lot of like lead electric guitar stuff or or like I know a couple of scale like shapes and I kind of follow it with my ear a little bit, but I usually end up like falling on my face and I start going for it hardcore. <laughs> but that's, that's kind of like the story of my music is that's when it, some things kind of shifted. And then we don't even go into karaoke. All of a sudden Bo introduced me to, to karaoke. And then I'm trying to like sing songs in front of all these people that I'm not really like a singer. I just sing while I play the guitar, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah. So take away the guitar and it's just like karaoke with a microphone and it's a whole nother type of expression, you know? So Bo's, Bo's been like a big part of like presenting um, ways for me to grow as a musician, as a singer. Uh, just, I remember our first road trip together. We went to Atlanta. We each had different trainings to do for the hotel. And uh, the entire like, seven eight hour road trip the entire road trip Bo was just playing music for me that i had never heard of before or that i was super unfamiliar with and every time he'd play another song i'd be like oh dang this is really good so that's like and ten, just stuff, ten, 10 hours of uh Bo's music yeah ten hours, stuff that i was hours. just kind of sheltered <laughs> i was sheltered from it a little bit you know when i was growing up or just like classic rock stuff or even um stuff that's modern um it was like, i, I think heard. king kings of leon was was one of them that you may may have known like one song from yeah i but, do like uh, one song yet <laughs> yeah. yeah it's funny you mentioned bethel music because i i've listened to a lot of their stuff i really like them i uh we you know carrie and i grew up in the church you know we've been involved as you know from a young age 
and even as adults we were involved and so i i got really into christian music and still to this day even though i don't go to church anymore but uh I, even to this day, I still listen to a lot of those Christian bands that I love, man. I can't, I can't stop listening to them. Yeah, I mean, it's just something about that type of music. It, it's made to move you, you know. And it, it's so interesting. We have a lot in common. Kyle and I, our, our father was a drummer, and our first introduction into music was through drums. That was one of the first instruments that yep. we picked up. Cool. And um, I, I, I just practiced every day. We would fight over the kit. <laughs> taking the turns and then I kit. would get to learn my favorite song and then I would go, okay, I know it on drums. Now what other instrument can I learn? And then I picked up a guitar uh, cool. or a piano. So then I just branched out and just became, you know, an amateur at everything. The first instance of um, Carrie and I ever being in a band was we had this really crappy Casio keyboard and dad bought us uh, for Christmas one year, like a, like a can, it was a Canon drum kit. I haven't heard about Canon even since then, but um, hmm. apparently they make cameras now. But uh, <laughs> they they invented the XLR did. too. Canon did. <laughs> but, wow. Uh, yep. And uh, and we were just hanging out in the garage, and we had my our dad. He had like all of his old uh, like microphones, and, and he had some SM fifty sevens from way back in the day, and uh, he had some old cables, and it was kind of like a crappy setup. But whenever we would all set it all up, it would, we would go to speak into the microphone, and because there was a bad ground in the garage, we'd get shocked on our lips quite you know, quite a bit. And so we just called ourselves the electros. And that was the very first like, like iteration of any sort of like music, <clears throat> like group or band or anything like that put together was uh, the electros. <laughs> I still, I still remember like, cause for a while we kind of fought over one instrument in the house. It was either a keyboard or the drums. And then at one point we started to have a guitar and keyboard. And then I remember the first time we ever hit like the same chord and it just resonated and harmonized mm. and you just get that Whoa, vibe we can do that? of playing music <laughs> with someone. Wow. Yeah. Like, and, and it, no matter how bad you are being a musician, no one can deny that that's not music. It's not like in comedy where you go watch a show and you don't laugh. You say, that's not comedy, but you can't go see a bad band. You just say, I don't like that band or I don't like that music. You don't say that's not music. Yeah. So it's something so palpable and something that can just move you to your core if you get it right, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's the magic. That's what we all try to capture in a, you know, either in a live show or just writing a song. Man. And that's a huge part of my relationship with my wife. When we were in high school, <clears throat> we started out just like, I'd be playing electric guitar for youth group and she was singing harmony, like background vocals. And then eventually it came to a point where we were both kind of like called up to like lead the sets and sometimes we would co-lead together. And then there was actually one time I had written this song um, from like Heartbreak when I was like freaking 13. This is so lame. But I had written this little song and <clears throat> I showed her the song like during the first year of our relationship back when we were like 15. And she literally took that song and guys, I was singing it and she like rewrote it from this like Heartbreak song into this love song. And it was like one of those movie moments or something. And you know how you're caught up in the moment and the magic and when you're 15 and in love and just like seeing and hearing her like take something. It was the first song I had ever written out of Heartbreak. So it was like so real and raw and then not take her like and put her own spin on it, but she like took it and it was almost like mending a broken heart. I know that sounds so lame, but it was so She, cool. she finished a story for you. Yeah. Right. She, yeah. It was so cool. That's awesome. So like, I love that she she and i have been like leading worship together ever since and doing writing music together and she writes a lot more than i do but occasionally um what usually happens is she'll write a song and then we'll play it in church and it's like incomplete and then i'll just like throw in a bridge that i come up with on the spot like and it just works perfectly and then it becomes part of the song so a lot of i'm like you said kind of earlier is i'm like a pretty spontaneous person <clears throat> and a lot of a lot of the stuff that I do, whether like in life or in music, is just kind of unplanned, and I just kind of go with it. And it doesn't always, it doesn't always sound great. It's not always well. Perfect, that's that's but... that's perfect. That's exactly what this podcast is about, man. It's not not planning it out. It's just doing what feels good and what's what inspires you in the moment. So that's perfect. That's exactly what this is. Yeah. And I should end this. Yeah. I should end this little part about me with. Now I'm teaching my son how to play drums. Oh, nice. And my eight-year-old son, and I could tell he was like, he had some natural, a uh, natural ear for it. And so now it's like every once in a blue moon, every few months, we'll just have like a drum lesson together. <clears throat> I'll drive him down to the church 
we'll just kind of like no one's around. We'll just go for it. And seeing him grow, even just over the past couple of years, I know if I was actually more diligent about it, like he could be so much better than he is right now. But it's really cool seeing him, me not have to tell him, all right, you're going to learn how to play drums, like him really wanting to. And it's just another part of that, like that legacy of like you're connecting. It's another way of connecting, but then it's also another way of like passing on. I love it. Beautiful. Passing man. the torch. So, yeah. so why haven't you brought Injustice over for a little studio session yet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Come on now. Actually, perfect opportunity. I was just thinking about, like, you know how sometimes there's something that with your parents that, like, you can connect better sometimes with other people than your parents. I was thinking, like, maybe I would reach out to you and see if you wanted to have a couple of, like, drum lessons with them. Of course. <clears throat> because I feel like you could just – there's just something – there that's different than when you're trying to learn from your dad you're learning from this other person who doesn't see all of the other stuff that you see at home you know and and that's that's the power of being a father they they want to make you proud you know they don't want to fail in front of you it's true well and i I think the key at least you know this was kind of true for me is just just let let them let them sit down and 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 have fun with it at first like don't don't push any any lessons or anything just have a, have fun with the drums like just 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 go at it right and then once they they dig in they dig their heels into it they're like oh my gosh this is awesome now now how do i actually do it <laughs> okay well let's start here <laughs> and then that and then you're getting them to tell you what they want to learn and and go from there so mm-hmm. i mean i i was going to mention this earlier but like the 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 change with music for me and i'm i'm not as much of a, a varied musician as all of you are here I'm pretty much just a drummer. Um, but once you hit that threshold of, of being able to just play without having to think about it, it's, it's night and day. I mean, you just, you just kind of reach that, 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 and you don't have to be that great, but once you, once you can, once you can just sit down and play, whether it's guitar or drums and somewhat jam along to whatever you're doing, you reach this level of freedom and uh, almost cathartic, cathartic, like, you know, action, no matter what's going on in your life, it's a release. Yeah. And then you can, you can push it for, for, uh, uh, further if you want to, but you don't have to, you know, it, it's just getting to that point is, is difficult for, for, for all of us. But once you do that, it's just the payoff. Yeah, there's a, huge. there's a, a certain point when you're learning a new instrument that something clicks for you. Right. And you just, you get mm-hmm. the feel for it. And for me, that actually occurred embarrassingly recently. And it's, it's, it's probably like five years or six years after I maybe, maybe a little bit more after I first started playing bass that I just started to like, that my body felt natural in, in with my hands in the position that they were in. And I really started to challenge myself. So it, it took me a long time and I just kind of, I probably wouldn't have kept at it if my brother wasn't doing it because it was very challenging for me and he picked it up and he was obsessed and he excelled and he got to that point quite quickly. Um, and for somebody who was in what we were like seventh grade, sixth grade, um, performing talent shows in middle school. And so it, it, it helped, it happened for him very quickly. And for me, I was just a kind of like, I wanted to hang out with my big brother, kind of like what you were saying with your brother. We were, weren't quite at that phase where we were friends. We were still, I was still kind of the annoying little brother. And so I kind of just tagged along and it wasn't in probably five or seven years, probably seven years, maybe even. <laughs> that uh, that I got that click moment. Where I was like, oh, I actually really love doing this, and I want to challenge myself to do better and to write and and do all these different things. So, well, you're saying Carrie was obsessed. He was obsessed with, with guitar. <laughs> <laughs> nah, can't be true. No. Can't be no. true. <laughs> I'm not the guy that can just write an entire song in four hours. <laughs> no. <laughs> so. Uh, so I'm trying to pick up some themes, you know, we got a lot of just, uh, passion, um, you know, something that led you through your life, made you who you are, something as, as important as music, passing the torch. I mean, where do you see a theme going with, with everything that we've talked about so far? I, th- I think you're definitely onto something there. Like that has been like, not just a constant in life, but it's something that's, been like the train that you hop on music's kind of been the train that i hop on and kind of takes you from one spot to another spot and then you camp out there for a while and then like the season changes and you gotta hop back on that train and keep going forward like whether it's uh like 
I feel like my life has changed so drastically in the past uh, 10 years, like just high school, not long after high school, getting married, getting pregnant, like right away. And then just a couple of years later, having another kid, a couple of years later, having another kid at the hotel, um, just taking on more and more responsibility throughout the years, <clears throat> getting busier, um, getting more responsibilities at church and stuff like through it all, like when it comes down to it, like the the one thing that's never changed is like multiple times a week, I have a guitar in my hand or drumsticks in my hand. <laughs> and um, yeah, just ex- either expressing yourself or like at church, even that's where I like you take the intentional time to even like just worship the thing that created you um, like at home playing writing music, love songs. Bo has helped me record love songs for Shelby on different special occasions, like letting, uh, even when our kids are born, just the first song that you kind of play in the room with them, it, you know, it's special, intentional. Um, one of the, uh, one of the themes I'm kind of getting out of this is that, uh, is something like, uh, like growth, like whether it's growth in your career, growth as a, as a friend, as a sibling, or as a husband, and then like, you know, for you as a father, uh, just about, you know, working hard towards those goals and just being the best version of yourself you can be and growing and spiritually, growing mentally, career-wise. So that's that's kind of... And the- even the, the past like year, I've been maybe more than a year, who cares what time it was, a year or two, whatever, I've definitely recently been way more on purpose trying to be a better husband and a better father. Like just realizing that so much of my time is taken from me. And the older my kids get, the more I realize how little I'm around them. Um, Even when I, and it's one of those things where I'm not beating myself up over it. I'm not being self-deprecating or anything, but it's just one of those things that it's like, no matter how much time you spend with the people that you love, it's never enough. And uh, that's become way more real to me, especially with this latest addition to our family with Isley um, and just seeing how much my kids love her and how much we love her and like us as a family, the whole dynamics change. So especially since she's been born, it's, it's just been more important for me just to be at home, just hanging out, just being with them, just being there for the memories that happen. Um, Cause as fun as it is to get like a, a cute little video on your phone when you're at work <clears throat> of something awesome that happened at home or some funny frustrating where <clears throat> there's spaghetti sauce everywhere and <laughs> you, you just laugh because if you're not laughing, you're probably crying. <laughs> so it's just, right. that's kind of been something very important to me lately is just being more a part of uh, home. And one, one theme that I also kind of uh, draw from this and from knowing you is the theme of energy, not, you know, the way you bring energy to the table, not just that, but the way that you talk about this is basically a transfer of energy in a way to different aspects of your life. And you've got so much going on that you're able to, to translate that consistently and shift things around to meet the things that are, are truly important in your life. And, you know, yeah. I, I, that, that energy is something that, you know, we all seek just as, as humans to get through whether, whether it's hardships or, or a good time, you need to have that energy to kind of appreciate and really do it justice. Yeah, and music definitely helps recharge that energy because that it's like that everything is awesome energy. <clears throat> I used to have what seemed to be an unlimited supply. It was like the Energizer Bunny battery. It was like, it just kept going and going. And then the more, the older I've gotten. That's why, that's why we kept, we kept sugar <laughs> yeah. away from you. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't need more. The more like adult I've become, it's like... <clears throat> the less energy there is or something. And the, the more, so now it's like music. I I'm con- there's, there's so much music coming out all the time that it's hard to even keep up, but it's just like, there's, I'm constantly letting music be something that recharges me and refreshes me and, and gives me that, you know, that pump when I need to, I don't know when I need more. I totally feel you, man. Well, I think there's a, there's a metaphor there. I mean, music is energy. It's frequencies. I mean, the entire wow, world, yeah. everything that we see, it's all just operating on frequencies. I mean, and music is such an important part of just human history in general. I mean, to the point where we, when we tune our instruments, 
a lot of people don't know this, but there's actually a resonant frequency of the earth that we base our tuning on. Man. It's all frequencies. It's all energy. Yeah, without the That's planet, awesome. without our planet, without everything around us, without the atmosphere, if we just somehow lived in space, we wouldn't have music. We needed a medium for music to pass through, which is the air we, we are breathing, you know? It's like everything works together. Everything's yeah. like a, a response to something else. Uh, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. I love it. Absolutely. I think that's a oh, that's, that's heavy, a guys. Good way that's to, heavy. To close off. Yeah, this. that was that was awesome, Kerry. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know how to wrap this up, oh, but man. we're getting into Chris Nolan territory. <laughs> oh man, if you bring like time space continuums into I'm, this, I'm uh, staying out of this. A song is born presents Tenet, the song. Oh. The rest of this podcast is gonna be played in reverse. <laughs> oh gosh. Yes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, shoot. Let's let's do some brainstorming and try to figure out where the, now the challenge can go, begins. You know? Yeah. Something that, and obviously we want, we want to relate it to Caleb as much as possible with his stories. So I think there's a powerful message there. We just got to tap if you into wanna, it for like, a little uh, bit, you know, just send some, like maybe just think of some like keywords, thoughts or phrases or even themes or styles of music. You know, I'm sure you've probably thought of like your, your, if you wanted to write a song, what kind of energy, what kind of genre you would use. So we'll start with that, you know, just talking back and forth with the style and theme and whatnot and I mean see what we can come up with. I mean he he yeah, he did bring up, you know, the the sound of a yeah, worship like, band. Like, I mean want, that like, that's globally become a pretty common uh universal sound. And a lot of it's just guitars with echo and delays and just these beautiful it's a very, melodies very on top lively of, live sound you know synth you know? and it strings very and, raw and, and live you know right that's, that's what i like about it like, yeah, like that's what i love about all that bethel stuff it's yeah, a, yeah it's, absolutely it's usually all recorded live yep yep which is fun yep but yeah I th i'm not the first to say that it's it's like u2 and Coldplay are like heavy influences of the modern day worship sound Oh, that's true. And those yeah. are two bands. My dad introduced us to Coldplay when he was going through that, like, introduced the kids to the 80s stage. <laughs> I'm sorry, you too, not Coldplay. And, uh, <clears throat> right, yeah. Well, it's funny you mention that because, like, every worship guitar tone I ever hear, yep. like, it, that's Dot, dotted eighth note delay. 100%. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Scraping the pick just the right way. <laughs> that's funny. Cool. I, I look forward to to doing that man I'll, I'll have to whip out the old vox yeah. tones and see what inspires something me, else you know? uh an album that's recently been like a soundtrack the past few weeks um one of my favorite artists his name is ben rector and he just released um part of the album there's like four of the songs out but it's called the joy of music and what i love about it is it feels kind of like right where i'm at where for a while, it just feels like, uh, like we talked about that energy. It's kind of like that joy that, that was so just naturally vibrant and abundant all the time. The more and more that you take on and it's like life can kind of drain you, it feels like that joy isn't so accessible. But the whole idea of this album that he just did is like him finding the joy of music again. Like he was writing this whole album. And then when COVID hit, he just scrapped that whole album and was like, I was just doing this, just going through the motions. And he does this whole it's got like it's like a modern meets nineties kind of a pop funk vibe and it's just one of those that when you every song that comes on it's just like you just can't help it like you're in the car and you're like, Yes. Yeah, Charlie Puth did <clears throat> something like that. He was about ready to release an album and then he scrubbed the whole thing because it just he's like it wasn't the end it wasn't the style I was going for. It wouldn't send the message. So he scrapped it and he released Mother and then heck I haven't followed much lately, but I don't know what he did with it, but he pretty much just threw songs away. So yeah, you got to have that right feel, cool. man. That's it's super important. Yeah, we're st we're telling stories, right? If you're not telling the story you want to tell, then start over. All right, awesome. I th well, I think we have uh, plenty to work with for this one. Um, well, Caleb, thank you for for coming on and uh, and and talking about your your life and your stories and inspirations for music. Thanks for well. having me. So you guys are stay the tuned. Freaking bomb. And <laughs> thank you. I've, I've been inspired <laughs> by your music. I've looked up to you guys for as long as I've known you, and always impressed every live show that I come to. I'm like, what is Kyle doing over there? Is he is he synth and bass at the same time? Like, what's good? <laughs> 
<laughs> and, yeah, and, and Carrie, <laughs> like, it's like there's no word to describe, you know. And Bo is the best drummer I've ever known personally in my life. And just there are things that he does in the little, the little symbol. Like, he just gets these quick little taps in the symbol. Like, you guys' synergy as a band is like, I love it. Thank you. That means a lot. We really appreciate that. And now Thank we're going to write a song together. Here. We get yeah. to write a song together now. Yeah, absolutely. Heck yeah, I'm excited. Ooh. Yeah, this is very cool. So how how involved are you wanting to be? Do you want to, you know, come up with some guitar ideas and throw them on top? Like, I'll, I, as a, as this main songwriter, I'll kind of take the lead. And, and then if there's anything that I can send to you, and maybe you can throw some stuff on top, um, you know, how, how far involved do you want to be with this project? It makes me nervous. It's, it's one of those things that or it'd, be, you, it'd be cool if you just kind of like started running with it if you want some of my input and i'll try to throw something together but like like i mentioned earlier i don't even know like lead guitar stuff um but kind of maybe the feel of the song or if you uh i don't know well you can act as uh, our producer you know we, we'll send you what we got and you help us refine it to your vision and then i mean your input is 100 percent what we're going off of so you, you can might send as us well some just reference in that uh, role, songs you know something like I, I like this chorus. I like, I like the energy yeah, of it. Sure. Something kind of like that, but I want to slow it down for like a verse of this song that I really yeah. like, you know, anything, man, just send us any references you, you can think of. If you, if you got a, if you get like a, um, a rhythm riff that you've been doing that you kind of feel the vibe on, you know, send, send it our way and maybe it can be incorporated into the whole, uh, you know, foundation of the song or in some way. Yeah. The, the tempo is something I need yeah. to get quick you know i want to know like a tempo that works for you because that's the heartbeat of the song and then everything after that you know i can start sculpting something on top of that so if you have a reference like hey i just like this tempo that I mean that right there gives me you know plenty to to paint okay. on sounds good challenge accepted <laughs> yep <laughs> all right <laughs> love it well looks cool. like we got work to do all right well we'll 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 see everyone yeah. uh you know, shortly. <laughs> All righty, guys. <laughs> it is February 2nd, Wednesday. Um, last night we had the conversation with Caleb. Everything went great. Um, we had a really big concept uh, based on our conversation, um, basically uh, relating everything that has been powerful in his life with music and how that relates to just the universe in general. And it's just huge concepts. Um, but once I broke it down and, and realized, cause I was, uh, I was first pretty perplexed. Like how do you take something, such a grand scheme concept and narrow it down into something and, and into lyrics. But basically it's love for music, how the way you see the world, you know, I, I kind of picture like the way Neo sees the matrix everything's just all these numbers but only he can encode it and see it for what it is um and sometimes that's how we perceive music you know some people have that that amazing ability more so than others um so that i kind of break that concept down and of course how it relates to his family um passing the torch on to his kids so all of these concepts are coming together for this song that i'm starting to write um i was able to come up with lyrics pretty quickly <laughs> unsurprisingly uh but when you think about it a life of music you know family i mean these are all things that i have experience in so i have a lot to draw from um so so far i have a song title it's called catapult and essentially it's just about you know that epic takeoff moment when you hear a song for the first time or even experience music for the first time it's such a extravagant event it's so touching it it just it gets threaded into the fiber of your being um and that's the power of music um so that's kind of where the song is going it's what it's about and obviously we're going to work in his personal life um his family the way he learned from his brothers and other members and now he's passing that torch on to the kids so that's where we're at right now um it just so happens my work schedule is pretty light today, so I think I'm going to get off work early and start tracking some instruments and put my ideas together. See ya.
All right, guys. Well, welcome back yeah, to the second on, part of the uh, the episode. What is this? Seven days now yeah, since our t- interview. Exactly. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. Last oh. Tuesday. Right, wow. What lot what happens seven when days. when you don't have uh, those same technical issues that we had the first time around? Oh, it kind of sure. kind of just worked out. Actually, we almost had one, but it, it resolved itself miraculously the next day. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah we thought we lost uh, Kyle's footage from the first part. And uh, luckily, the next day it showed up. So, yeah, we were able to salvage that. That was great. We even did a whole second entire interview. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a it was a good practice run through for you know. Yep. <laughs> right. Just but, more time but, with the bros. Luckily, yeah. you got yeah, you guys get to sure. see the natural first first part. So. <clears throat> yep. Well. Well. Anyways, we're back, and uh, seven days have passed. We've gone through uh, a new song and new video and everything. So, Caleb, how did we do? <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> phenomenal phenomenal it it was really cool to see the whole song come together like it was like an hour after our first interview that carrie sends me like the lyrics like the <laughs> the full song was and, it was it a full hour or did did we like not even wrap up the podcast by the time he sent like the full li- lyrics to us yeah was it may it, not yeah. have even been an hour i, mean, I think kyle was still rolling up cables <laughs> yeah pretty much i i, I, I don't I, I think carrie spits out lyrics faster than a fax machine's capable of like it's, and, it's crazy it's like printing <laughs> done and they were just so like they were so spot on it was just, he was being so much quieter during the second interview like i was like oh man that stinks maybe he just wasn't getting as much out of it but he was just like totally absorbing and like transferring the power onto the paper yeah my my hamster wheel was spinning really quick (laughs) yeah Yeah, i I wanted to i wanted to read read the the text from caleb uh after after you know you sent over the lyrics to him um that night carrie carrie just sent me what he has lyrically and my response was I am laughing in glorious disbelief at how quick you came up with something so perfect. I mean, that that was just uh, it was awesome. Uh, I read uh, I read the lyrics to my wife like cuz I I had just gotten home like it was I was sitting down I was like taking my shoes off like and I get and I read them to her and she started laughing. She's like, "Oh my goodness, like that's incredible." Like uh, she was really excited to kind of see the final product and so I kind of showed her the bits and pieces that we were getting with audio and video and stuff along the way. And she's been blown away this whole time. Um, yeah, it's just been, it's been an awesome week. What, what did you, what did you feel about like the process of how everything <laughs> went? It was it what you expected was, you know, what, what differences were there? No, I mean, I guess I didn't really have like a, an expectation for how it was going to play out, but I, I guess the one expectation I have, I just didn't realize it was going to all happen so fast. But, like the lyrics happening that night, and then we were getting audio within like a day or two or something. And, and I was able to just give like, a, I didn't have like much feedback. Cause I was just like, this is incredible. This is awesome. Like just keep going. Um, but there was a moment, there was like a lyric that you had written. Was it composed a lifetime composed and that I love classical music. So like I was, I just sent him a quick little video message like, Hey, can you like add some kind of like something orchestral or something like a, a string section or orchestral <laughs> and you did and then it was like and even my suggestion was like maybe just maybe just like on the one word like i was just trying to be like as little input as possible i didn't want to like overstep creative nah, stuff. dude, i gave you like a full 16 <laughs> bars of it <laughs> i know you like you like totally put it into the whole bridge it was so cool yeah my, uh, my, my intentions from the start were to, to do something like that and uh but i've had a kidney stone so i was like like bedridden for two days so um carrie you know he's like oh i I made a new mix he didn't say anything he just like i sent a new mix and then all that was in there i was like holy cow it's so good it's so awesome and there was a lot of little things throughout the whole process um that just kept on making me happy like um the first time the first like the first interview i don't know which interview it was in so i don't know if this is in the original podcast but like I'm mentioning musical stuff and Kyle just totally surprises me. And he's like, Oh yeah, I know that band. And, and this song and Kyle, the song that you mentioned, by the way, you make me brave. I totally forgot to even mention that my daughter Jubilee, her middle name is brave because of that song. No way. Like, so like what are the odds that you mention 
like such a huge moment, a huge song. I love that life. song, man. I love that song. And, and then uh, you mentioned like Jason Upton, which is like a deep cut for from like my younger days. And then uh, Carrie sends me the Angels and Airwaves song, The Adventure. And he's like, hey, this is like a vibe that I'm feeling for the, or however you mentioned it. But like, it was kind of a, a similar tone that you were going for. And you had no idea that during a really big year of my life, which was like going from ninth to 10th grade, it was just like, I was like growing my hair out. I was like exercising every day. I was like being more adventurous and I was being, I was taking more chances. I was being more social and stuff. And every day that summer, I would listen to that song on this, <clears throat> on this like jog that I would do around our neighborhood. Cause it was like a free download of the week on iTunes way back when. And so I would have never even known that band or that song if it wasn't a free download of the week. I was just like, ah, oh, heck. And then I loved it. And I started, it was like a part of my daily playlist. So oh, that was, that's a huge song in like my, the history of my life. And I feel like there's another thing too. Um, but I can't remember it at the moment. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I got to tell you though, as you're with you in like somewhat of a producer role, it was probably the least amount of resistance I've ever gotten from anybody. Everything, you were just so okay with everything. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's that's good to hear. Yeah. I had a lot more notes, but I just didn't want to, I didn't want to be too mean. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I need you to redo the second verse, put a little more grit into it. (laughs) I need more cowbell. (laughs) More cowbell, baby. (laughs) Uh, Even the moment, like uh, there was little moments that in the first draft of the song of like the first audio file that was sent that I noticed I didn't even think that it was a, a thing that needed to be tightened up or tuned up but just like musically like in the the more final edit I could just hear a difference like I don't know whether it's like mastering or whatever you guys did but just like the level the the volume levels of the instruments like the smoothness of the transitions it was just like it was really really awesome when I first heard the first thing and like the each step of the process, it's gotten like better and better. So it's been cool to kind of see that whenever I hear like, oh, yeah, you record your album and then it goes off and gets mastered. I'm, I never really kind of. Uh, yeah, there's actually the there's, there's a couple there's actually quite a few elements in the final mix that were in the original demo. Right, Kerry? Um, I mean, all the guitar parts and stuff were the same. Like if I'm going to put a guitar track down, I'm, I'm just going to double it. I'm going to nail the part as best I can. I don't want to redo guitar parts. So all the, from the original one that you heard, I didn't change any of the guitar stuff. Um, I recorded some DIs. So afterwards, like during the mixing process, I would go in and, and restructure some of the guitar sounds to, to start. Cause you have to, you have to accommodate for everything else on the mix. So I'm listening to the bass and the guitar and the guitars and the drums and make sure that they all have a cohesion and a sound together. And then you kind of structure everything from there. But having those DI tracks to go back to my original guitar sound, uh, which is just my raw guitar going into the interface, um, yeah, you allows did me that. to restructure some, the whole song. You did some guitar reamping, right? Like you took the guitars yeah. and completely reamped them and Correct. gave it a whole different sound. Right. It was very. Yep. It was very. Uh, um, the fir- the first time around, it was very bright guitars. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the second time they you warm them up with whatever way you like uh, reamped them or whatever. They, they sounded much warmer and they, they fit with the sound of the song so much better because the first time it was very much um, kind of like, like that box sound I think you were going for. And then you rounded them off and they sounded great. I loved it. It was great. I think the biggest breakthrough for the entire process, because at first I was kind of worried. It just, it just sounded okay. I wasn't loving it, but Kyle, when he sent the intro with the synth, that 100% set the tone for the rest of the song. Like as soon as he gave us the intro, like I knew what that song was, what it was going to be. And that was what it was missing, which was a really cool process for me because I got to write something that was the middle because it, you know, his intro at last about a minute. And then, so then the vocals come in and all that, but it, with him setting the tone, it really just restructured the whole song and how I saw it. I a hundred percent agree with that. Like, you know, even even doing the first um, part of the song before the the later half of it, I guess the, the middle, um, you know, I just uh, felt like there there was something missing, and I, I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And then as soon as you know Kyle put that that intro together, it's just like, okay, there's the vibe of the song. There's there's how I get into it, and then 
not only for the 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 music aspect but for the video of it it just kind of set the the tone of leading into what the video was and you know kind of directed me a little bit in that regard so that was so cool how like something that see that, that maybe maybe many people might kind of look over an intro like that but it's so important to setting those those uh the subtext of the song and the vibe of the song throughout so definitely kudos kyle <laughs> yeah thank you guys I, I i really appreciate that um, and i also yeah, I, yeah. I think the the value of a good song is its replay value mm -hmm. to go back and hear things that you didn't hear before and one example is like there's a heartbeat in the intro uh, yeah there's a heartbeat yeah. in the breakdown and and unless you're listening the on the right speakers mm -hmm. though you're not going to hear it because it's like super low end but if you listen on like really good headphones or in a car like you can hear the heartbeat it's really oh, cool. so cool i, have I haven't even noticed I, that part yet I a hundred percent. Yeah, so that's true. what I'm saying. Like, there's some there's some yeah. stuff that I snuck in there to to help with the storytelling of it. That it's so just cool. it's like subconscious, but you know, once you listen for it, you kind of get an appreciation for it. And and that's that's kind of another thing that I really like about this this particular project from from doing the um, the the typical uh, original stuff that we were doing before, where we're trying to frame it as stuff that we can do as a three piece band live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, right. and, you know, I've only right. got, you know, four limbs and, you know, <laughs> Car Carrie and Kyle, you each have like eight. So I don't, I don't, you know, you still can't do all the, the, the stuff that you need to, to, to produce like an, a really epic song like this, where it has so many different, like, again, you listen back and you hear, um, that, that heartbeat, you, you hear the tambourine, you hear the, the timpani playing in the, in the breakdown and, I mean, all those little pieces kind of add up to create this uh, summation of an experience, and yeah. that's what that's what I really love about this is because I mean, there's no no holds barred. Like we we can just go off and put in all kinds of different stuff if we want to, if it makes sense for the song that we're doing. So yeah, yeah, we're trying to do we're trying to storytell audibly, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and it's definitely really cool to to feel like uh known or something like i know we've all known each other for a long time but like the conversation that we had last week on the podcast was just like a very specifically focused conversation about my life and stuff and it was just really cool that you guys were like actively listening and took that and really put like so much of my life experiences into like this one song which is it's so cool <laughs> It just, it's definitely, it's yeah. an honor, but. See, and I, I haven't even thought of it that way yet because it's just been a song that I've been working on. I, I haven't even thought about like, it's almost like a gift to you for you and your son. Like you'll have that yeah. forever to, to look back on, which is cool. And I haven't even, even, I've been so busy just making the song and trying to make that happen that I didn't even think about your experience for that. And that's, that's interesting too. And, and actually I have this as, as one of my notes to, to mention because it was such a cool experience. I I've hung out with Caleb numerous times over the years, but I haven't really got a chance to hang out with him and, and justice and spending the, the, the evening with him, uh, you know, seeing father and son and, and just kind of doing those shoots. I mean, yeah, we have the footage and we put the video together, but you know, me personally, it was, it was a great experience just to see that. And, you know, we, we went and grabbed dinner afterwards and it was just, just a cool, cool experience to have that that I wouldn't have necessarily gotten that opportunity um, outside of, of this project, you know, it, and hopefully it's not the last time, but you know, that, that was just really, really neat experience for me to see that. That's the un unintended consequences of the podcast. Oh, I like it. <laughs> unintended consequences. Well, and um, both in a real, in a real world situation, if someone came up and like, Hey man, I want to film you and your kid for no reason. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Probably, there's a reason yeah. why that doesn't happen outside of the context of this project there would be some questions yeah <laughs> <laughs> it would bo did such an amazing job with all yeah. the footage like i was blown away and uh when we were just watching it right before we started here and the little music video that, that's put together the song is it's not a little music video it's like an epic music video and it's like you just said it's a gift this is going to be like one for the memory books. Um, I mean, I know we're going to be watching this song years and years down the line. <clears throat> it's it, like, it tells a story, but then we also see the picture of justice and I, and me showing him different musical 
things on like different instruments and, and him rocking out and him jamming and him being himself, just kind of being silly and funny. And uh, yeah, that, and that night was just, justice was just being so silly with, <laughs> with the foe at the restaurant later that night. Um, just telling these hilarious little third grader jokes, you know, Yeah, but now, it he, was he, cool. He's, he's got his own podcast <laughs> that he's going to do. Oh, nice. What, what, what was it called? Uh, I can't remember the the title, but you know the the punch was, was kicking the nuts. <laughs> it was called a kick in the nuts with Justice Sullivan. <laughs> Sign me up. Oh man! And what did he say? He's like, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on. He he was talking about this other comedian, and he was like, I'm gonna go on that comedian's podcast, and then I'm gonna have him come on my podcast, and then I'm gonna kick him in the nuts. And like and he was. <laughs> It was just like a, a long run up to, at, to and, then, and then I'm going to kick him in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like the the guys hanging out at a having dinner, and he was just being one of the guys. And I right. love seeing him That's doing funny, that. It was, man. That's, That's funny, man. That's funny. It, it's funny. Uh, my my son, I played the song for him, and it's the first time ever in the history, like anything that I've ever made. He's like, "Can you send me that? I like that." Uh-huh. Like, and then wow. my cousin Jake, I played it for him, and he got teary eyed. He got all like emotional from it, and he's like, "He said, out of all the songs, this is my favorite that you guys have done." Yeah, when I oh when I, sh- when I showed getting, the final like, some version, crazy responses from people, which is awesome. That yeah, when good. I showed the when I showed the video to Jen, we we both kind of teared up. It was very moving. It, it's it's so good. Yeah, Carrie, I don't think that we would have gotten the same song if you weren't a father. Like right. I know that you were drawing from like even your own stuff, so that's what's really cool too is to like be able to trust somebody else with that like it's like you get it you know like you have right. that there's like the you know something but then you like know something and you like you know the thing yeah i mean the song <laughs> the lyrics came together quick but in my defense like i'm not breaking any new ground here we're talking music true and family and you know everything that i already have experience with yeah i mean the, the first part i mean there was so many correlations that you guys had so so many similarities that you you drew from um you know family of musicians and so on i'm not going to rehash the first part but that that was just kind of really cool to see that um that connection yeah so would this be the uh the right opportunity to shift gears and uh and present the video let's do it it. all right well here's catapult Evidence I'm born to have a voice Akin to music like I ever had a choice I hear the melody in every noise Even silence has a harmony Born to the temple of a story never told Listen for colors as a mystery unfolds I'm at the mercy of whatever knows The universe is calling
<laughs> you know, even that title catapult, when I saw that title, I was like, what? Like what? Like it didn't, the very first instinct was, I mean, I didn't have much time to dwell on that, but like right after that, I read the lyrics and it was like, Oh, like it made so much sense. It was perfect. It was like, but the the word catapult, I was just thinking like of the whole conversation we had and I was like, that's catapult. And then it just totally clicked when you actually, when it, in the context of the song, it's like, that's the perfect word. And that's a word that you don't often hear in songs. So it's even cooler. Yeah, Trib- honestly, I, I was trebuchet hoping for make I was cut. hoping for trebuchet <laughs> <laughs> or ballista. <Yeah. laughs> All right, so. so so did anyone uh, aside from Caleb? Did anyone find the gator in the lake? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Like when they're sitting nope. by the water, <laughs> like just yeah. looking like bait. Yep. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a little little blurred blob little in the egg. water there. A little lump. Yeah, but yeah, before I got over, um, you know, Kate, Caleb was sh- showing me pictures of the thing, like on the um, what was it, like right on the right near the shore where we were, right? Yeah, like right on the bank where we were standing, like twenty minutes prior to that. That it was like a medium sized alligator, and he was just like chilling, just like sunbathing or whatever. And then I, I kind of started to approach to like take a picture, but, like even from like fifty feet away, and he like, just jumped in and swam. Oh yeah, over to the other edge. You're 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 being hunted. You're being weighed and measured. <laughs> no, not <laughs> yes. with alligators. Crocodiles, <laughs> yeah, cro- crocodiles will murder you and your family and everyone you ever known. But <laughs> alligators just want to be left alone, man. Yeah, it was funny though. As I was shooting, like you know, I've got my back to the water in some shots. I'm just like, where is he? Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> Florida man loses his leg while filming a music video. Yep. Oh my gosh. Florida, no, no, it'd be Florida Man sacrifices his son just to finish music video. <laughs> That's a true Florida Man. <laughs> Have you ever done the Florida Man test where you, you put Florida Man and then your birthday and just see what yeah. crazy stuff pops up? No. Oh, it's it's a fun one. Google yeah. it. I've, I've done it, but I forget what came up. But something definitely came up. I forget what it was. That's all I got. <laughs> So yeah, I mean this was this was a really fun fun one, and uh, I, I think we kind of got a chance all of us to to stretch our legs a little bit more in this one rather than than fending off a bunch of uh, uh, you know technical issues and glitches here and there. So uh, I still had some when I was when I was doing the sh- the filming. I forgot to turn off one of my uh, uh, features on the camera, so it was all shaky footage because I turned off my stabilization feature. Oh, the and, micro jitter. Uh, micro yeah, jitter. I had which which was a happy accident because at the beginning, the intro, um, I used some of that footage from the like the the the, tr- the, the oh, light coming through the tree. Effect? That was just the the jitter from the camera, oh and I was God. like, you know what? I'm going to use this because this is perfect for Dude, that that intro. I was, was going to no say idea. like if you if you no blurred idea. it just a little bit, like give it a little bit of motion blur and give it that dreamy effect, that would have been perfect. Ah, well, yeah. hey, wow. you could you could have sent that feedback. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had no, I had no idea. I totally thought I was like, man, does your Bo, your camera Bo have totally ibis? Put on a, uh, wh- what is it? Does your camera have ibis, or is it just in the uh, in body st- uh, image stabilization? Yeah, yeah. I just turned that feature off oh. because it was it, since I'm using it for my webcam um, on the computer, I, I, it actually crops out the image a little bit if you turn that on. So, oh. so that's why I had it off and I forgot to change it. So I was trying to get over to Caleb's place quick enough to get the uh, the you know the the sun was going down and I wanted to get that in the backdrop and and coming through the trees and actually on my way over there um, I'm, I'm I'm looking in the sky and I see like the the sun is reflecting off of a nearby cloud and, and creating a prism effect with like a rainbow on the cloud and I was like oh where that cloud is would be perfect if I could get you know Caleb and his son and that that like prism effect prism effect in there. Um, unfortunately I wasn't able to, but that's, that's funny though, that, that, uh, Bo's shaky hands actually inspired me. It was, it was very, it was amazing. It was a really cool effect. I thought, it's you, so cool. That, I thought you added that later on. I had no idea that you just turned, actually don't turn off that uh, feature. You, yeah, you did good, Bo. I love, there's a couple of shots in there. I like, I like the base when they, was it, I'm assuming it was justice hitting the base. Yeah, yeah, yeah like small hands, slow-mo. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> yep. And then uh, just the playing of the drums. And yeah, it was a lot of good shots. You did a great job. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. 
Wow. Now, yeah. Now we got to figure out what we do for the next one. <laughs> Raise the bar again. Oh gosh. Well, with yeah, that, it keeps getting better. <laughs> I don't see. Yeah, I don't see it getting any better. Right. It's all downhill. <laughs> it's all downhill from here. <laughs> I'm gonna ride a real turd next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much, Caleb, for for joining us for this uh, second episode and being our first first real guest. You know, and uh, I, I had a lot of fun doing it, and hopefully, people enjoy it, and and we'll go on from here. It was legitimately my pleasure. Same. All right, guys. We'll take it easy. All right, guys. Catch you later. Peace. Bo here with Song is Born. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast. We'll be doing an episode a month with new guests, new song ideas, and you can keep in touch with us on Facebook, Instagram, or our website at songisborn.com. Please share any feedback you have for future episodes. See you next time. I think it's time to take a chance or two. I'm in the middle with enough to lose. This joke of a life is all but mine. You like a tidal wave. What's left is it worth to save? Is it ever enough? Keeping home alive.